There she is again, actually scored. A debut last time out, she was the other goal scorer in the 4-0 win over Krivas. Flicked on by Dufour. Step, of course, spent the season with uh, Paris's city rivals, PSG. the chase as we saw from a very lively debut she's uh, not afraid to put in a shift Beth Mead once again named on the bench interesting to see whether she is called upon this afternoon in a step Hooked back forwards towards my compatriot. Now Mornham. Little, it's a nice reverse pass. Slightly overcooked. Yeah, really good build up play there from Arsenal. We've seen, we've, we've seen with Chloe Lucas in the previous game. She's a live wire for Arsenal. She offers something different as well. I think sometimes if you push Katie McCabe, McCabe up and then you're trying to uh, fit a player in who's naturally left footed as well. To be able to have an option of a, another good, very good right winger, obviously you've got Mead coming back too. It just gives another option to Arsenal. Nice take by Matteo. Casey McCabe is the uh, other player to have dropped out of the starting 11 this afternoon, along with uh, Alessia Russo. I guess that's almost to be expected. Steph Catley coming onto the pitch around the hour mark. You expect it may be the same case today, just to ensure that everyone's getting a decent run out, keeping the legs fresh at this very early stage of the season. Speaking of which, Paris have actually played uh, four friendlies and that other qualifier going into this game. So in theory, they are further ahead in terms of their match sharpness. step invited to step out of defense it's been run back though and Paris off to play on the counter attack with Bourdieu up against Wubben Moy it's calm composed confident defending by Wubben Moy she's to run on it a little too long though and here's Matteo Wubben Moy will just shepherd that one out and behind to return for the earlier mistake yeah, really good there from Wubben Moy. You know, being a centre-back, watching that, I do have my heart in my mouth a little bit with the, the turns. Um, but again, it's now, once you've done it, now it's passing the ball on because obviously Paris are going to react quickly and you don't want to then turn over after doing so well winning the initial ball. Your knuckles, do you, do you just get that bit, oh, I'm sweating. bit more white every time <laughs> you see a full playing defender, Another, another grey hair has popped up on my head. <laughs> Bogar with the throw in. Giving straight back to Arsenal. Stenius looking to stretch that back line again. She's got Krebaval for company. And there's a glimpse of the Paris coach, Sandrine Soubeyron. France's most capped player of all time, 198 international appearances for her. She also played more than 250 times for this club. Catley, now a chance for Mornham. 
Dozy had to be alert to tip that one over. Yeah, it's a great strike from Marnham. And it's, what's really good about him, what's pleasing, is the one-two touch, the link-up play between Catley and Marnham. Catley's obviously a lot higher then as well, being a fullback. But it's great. Arsenal, I think, play their best when they play the one-two touch football, especially if you've got Paris who is sitting in the block. It was Mornham who won the corner, and it will be Mornham to deliver. So Catley's the short option there, but there are plenty of targets in that penalty area. Paris have got a fair bit of height themselves. And it comes from Mornham. Oh, Nadozi's not made good contact with that one. And Ruben Moy having that header cleared off the line. Still Arsenal attack, Lacasse. Eventually cleared by Soye. Nice play by Defort. Done really well there to find Bourdieu. Space opening up for Mateo on this near side. Steady next to go back across for Koroshek. And now Bogar. I think that is going to be the concern watching uh, Paris's first game of this mini tournament. They do like to play on the counter-attack and they have the players to uh, really cause Arsenal problems. Yeah, you're thinking that you're looking at the midweek game um, with Lynn Sherping, the, they had the counter opportunity and you know they, they did expose Arsenal in the flanks as well, but they didn't have the quality to match it in the players around. I think I was just looking at a lot of Woman Moyes' attempt there. A bit more power, obviously Paris FC had a, a player on the line, but a bit more power. It's a great chance for Arsenal. So, yeah, using all of her experience to be in the right place at the right time. Throw that one away from danger. But again, it's Paris who are on the front foot. Arsenal really being made to work hard defensively as Maritz is pulled up for bringing down Bourdieu. Yeah, and this is what we're talking about. Obviously, Paris, they're attacking at a lot more pace um, than what Lynn Sherping did. And, and they've got a lot more bodies in support as well. We sound a tactical foul from Maritz there, but... It's an opportunity for, for Paris to put the ball into Arsenal's box. A couple of players over this for the visitors, but it does look as though the captain, Tantini, will be taking responsibility for this one, the 37-year-old. That cultured right foot delivery we've seen for so many years at this level. And it comes from Tinney. That one. And that's up to her usual high standards. Easy in the end for Zinsberger. Yeah, she'll be disappointed by that as well. But also, Paris, there weren't really any runners, really, whether they, they were too far away or they, the, once the ball's delivered, they just thought that there weren't really any chance for them to get there. But not really any runners at all into the box. Koshek's goal on uh, Wednesday did come from a set piece. from a corner kick they didn't plan out their free kick on that occasion the same level of uh, care Belty it's a tough one for Illestet to deal with but stretches out one of her long legs and is able to get there just in the nick of time Bogart Four again, the uh, obvious out ball on that left hand side. Bags of pace. Zinsberger gets that one into a decent enough area, but Catlin Ford can't get there in enough time. One back by Velti. Mornham. Well marshalled in the end by Lemuel. Dozy mentioned that she frustrated England in the build up to this game, but she actually saved a penalty against Chloe Lacasse's Canada. At the World Cup kept a clean sheet against uh, Katie McCabe's Republic of Ireland as well, and then against England, of course. She also beat uh, or was on the side that beat Australia in the group stage, too. So 
Plenty of uh, Arsenal players affected there by her incredible performances in goal. Still just 22, Nadozi. Loose from Nivelti. Steph Catley and Zinsberger had to get that one right and just about managed to do so. I think on that you could just see clearly how the, the pitch is holding up the ball. That through ball then, if it had been on a, a grass pitch, would have probably bounced through to Zinsberger. But Catley does really well. She reads the bounce. It's not going to go there and just gets her body in the way. But that could have been one of those ones. Goalkeeper coming out, defender running back. Neither of you get in, the full would go through. But thankfully, Catley dealt with it. Those situations do crop up, Jilly. In fact, we'll come back to that point in a second as uh, Caitlin Ford is now bearing down on goal and there may be an opportunity for Blackstenius. Good defending in the end by Sawyer. I was going to say, is in those situations, whose responsibility is it? I guess the goalkeeper can see more of it, but Steph Catley's closer to the ball. Yeah, I'll always just say, unless you get a call from the goalkeeper, defender deals with it. You know, I think that sometimes the goalkeeper needs to let a defender defend. Um, but yeah, just defend defend the ball and, and don't let any confusion. When the problems arise when the hesitation is there from a goalkeeper or defender, so just deal with it and then you can talk about it afterwards. Ford hustled and harried on this near side. That's been a free kick. So they're getting uh, touch tight to her. Opening 12 minutes, we've seen Paris are very keen to win the ball back in high areas of the pitch. I think in uh, modern coaching parlance, we call that good on the transition. Yeah, we would, we would. But I also think as well for Arsenal, they need to move the ball quickly, like we spoke about midweek. They need to move it quicker, and the movement off the ball needs to be better for the person on the ball. You know, they can't be static, especially with Paris, the way they're pressing. You can't be static. You have to help the person on the ball and move. Belsic offering the uh, angle for Illestet. It's picked out Warnham, and this is much better from the Gunners. Lacasse. Options in the middle include Black Stenius and Ford. And now it's back into the path of Maritz. And just couldn't get the contact she needed on the cross. Yeah, really good from Lacasse as well because. She gets, she beats the, the defender in the wide position, and you're looking that she could have just whipped the ball across, but everyone was set in there already. You know, she makes decisions to, to sort of fake it and cut it back, but Maritz, not being disrespectful in any way, but you'd probably be wanting someone like Kim Little to be picking the ball up there on the edge of the box. Ford. Catley behind her. Those two combining so well on the left side of Australia's uh, attack and defence at the World Cup. They know each other very well. Instead, Arsenal went to the other side before in the step with an ambitious long ball looking for Catley again. Prebaval. Now Bogart. It's forward by Koroshek. Another for Arstat to chase. She's been incredibly prominent in the uh, first two appearances for Arsenal. Probably done a lot more defending than I think she would have been expecting. At this uh, early stage of the competition, but it's kept them honest. I also think as well she's fit straight in. You know she's been she's playing that back line like she's been playing there for for many years, and I think that just shows the experienced professional that she is. She had a fantastic World Cup for Sweden, um, and she's gone straight into the team. Obviously, you're potentially looking at when Leah Williamson comes back, that could be a potential partnership to at centre back. But yeah, a great player who's who looks like she's been playing there for many, many years. She's also got an incredibly good record against Paris, has never lost in her uh, four previous appearances, winning three, drawing the other one. Belty. Trying to uh, shimmy away from danger, giving it straight back to Paris. 
forward, back helping out the defence. Power forward herself as well, the Australian. Really good play by Arsenal's number 19 until the final ball let her down. Quarter of an hour gone, pretty even. Until Wilbur Moy having a header cleared off the line. Paris have looked lively coming forward. Again, not really settling into a pattern or a rhythm just yet. Easily done by Zinsberger. The opposite of uh, Illestat against uh, Paris base sides. Twice knocked out in the Champions League by PSG it's in the uh, quarterfinals back in 2017 with Bayern and of course uh, 2020 with Arsenal this is a uh, Parisian side on the up though they pride themselves on their youth development a number of uh, really promising youngsters through their ranks and uh, on the bench as well. Little able to just uh, buy herself a free kick there. I do think, I know we speak about the pitch, it does hold the ball up when you're playing on a 3G, 4G. It, it does hold it up. So where Arsenal used to playing the crisp football and, and setting it into Kim Little and switching it out the other way, it's getting stuck under their feet. You see it with Caitlin Ford. She's a profound dribbler with the ball. You know, she's really good at running at, with the ball at pace, but it's getting stuck under her feet, which then affects the way Arsenal play. It's a nice touch around the corner by Maritz to find the cast Went for the return pass herself. Good footwork again by Maritz. So the Gunners' second goal on Wednesday came from a free kick around this area. Katie McCabe it was who delivered it. She's not on the pitch, nor is uh, Lena Hertig, the goal scorer. Such is the strength in squad depth that Arsenal have at their disposal this season. Now got the likes of uh, Steph Catley and Freedom Marnham stood over this one. In from Catley. Cleared by Tinney. I think Catley will be disappointed with that delivery. You know, especially if you've got Black Stinius in there, you've got Illis there, you've got Woman Moy, all great headers of the ball. You've got to beat the first the first player, especially. You've got to get it in the box. Up, uh, a bit more central hit. She uh, continues to make her way over from right to left. It does mean that Illustrate has now gone forward. Looks like in a wing back roll. You see her at the top of your screen. LT. Moy. 
Ireland's back line momentarily uh, disrupted. Merritt's now working on the left side. Rivermoy not taking any chances, but she's just given it straight back to Paris. And now here's Bourdieu. The four on the overlap. Up against Lucas and he's got the better of her as well. Defour can still come forward in towards Bourgeu. Well off target in the end. And he's looked a bit rock there at the back. Yeah, and he's come from, obviously, Ruben Moyer. She's played the ball out to Lucas. Lucas has played it back. Stitched her up a little bit. She's gone to put her foot through it. Doesn't really get any height on it. And then what she does then is she steams out a defence to go and make up for the error that she's caused leaving then the space behind. So I've done that many a times as well. It's one of them ones you're trying to make up for losing the ball, but then it just opens up the space. Um, so I still were very fortunate there to not um, to not be more damaged than what they were. Oh, they still had a few players out of position following the corner kick as well, as Steph Catley made her way all the way across the back line. There she is at the bottom of your screen now in a more natural position. This is uh, Illestet, which is... Uh, very reassuring to see. By Stenius. Maritz. Matteo. Only accomplished uh, carrier of the ball. <laughs> Midway through the first half. Jilly, your thoughts on the way that Arsenal have started this game? Yeah, I mean, I think very similar um, to the other night. I think they, they need to move the ball a lot quicker. They need to have a bit more support off the ball. But it's a different a different test, you know, a, di a different proposition. Black Stenius is through here. Really good play by Lacasse. Black Stenius! Straight at Nadozi in the end. Yeah, she does really well there. Lacasse, because she sees the run. Blackstinius playing on the back shoulder of Sissoko. I mean, it's very difficult, I think, to finish from that from that angle. Um, but what she does do is she wins Arsenal corner. And Dozy can keep that one in play. For a moment. Gunners, Swedish striker, burst into life. Today's referee, Christina Georgieva. It's Bulgarian. Just making sure that uh, no one is infringing Nadozi in the goal. It will be Catley to deliver again. Better on this on this one. Nadozi punch is clear, but she will win a free kick. It's one of them ones, though, as well, where you know how Ndozi is as a goalkeeper. She wants to come for everything. So maybe that's about just being a little bit cleverer now and thinking, can we do it where it drops into potentially the penalty area? Because if she does want to come that far out and she doesn't get a full connection on it or it drops, then she's a long way off of her line. But I think just play, you're playing to her strengths when you're just sticking it on top of her. It's a crowded box as well, isn't it? If she has to wade her way through a sea of players, there's uh, more potential that she will be stranded away from her goal. Lemuel for Sawyer. Neat footwork there by Clara Matteo. Gets a return pass as well from Bourdieu, and it's a nice ball through for Defour. Already with three goals to her name in this competition. And keeping Zinsberg were honest at a near post. Yeah, really good work from Matteo. They're really good feet, and you, you're looking. The space has been left by Catley, who's come out to try and press the ball. Obviously, really exposed. Illustrate there is on her own. Before, obviously, does 
does well to try and make something of it. A bit similar to the Black Stinius chance there. It'd be difficult for her to score from that angle, but what she does do, similar as well before, is she wins, obviously, Paris in the corner. Martini has had a couple of set pieces already. They've left a lot to be desired. All Paris players seem to be uh, starting their runs from deep here. As you going towards the near post, it was aimed towards her head. And Zinsberger will need to take control of this situation, which she eventually does at the second time of asking. Or can Arsenal catch Paris on the break? The French side very quickly back into their positions, but that's a lovely little drop of the shoulder from Kim Little. Stenius to Ford. Catley continued her run. She just won't be able to get there before it rolls out for a goal kick. Yeah, really good work then from Fall, but also fantastic turn from Kim Little there. Sells the Paris midfielder. She goes running past her. Great turn. Blackstinius comes. That's what it's good about Arsenal is when they do do the link-up play. One, two touch. They move Paris. They can't keep up with them. And Catley was trying so hard to keep that in, but just run away from her. Two underneath this one. Uber Moy. Good anticipation from the England international. And into side eight. Free kick as well. Koroshek with the handball. Incredibly straight in terms of uh, trajectory here. Expecting something a bit different from Frieda Mornham. And the step is forward on the right hand side. Mornham goes left instead towards Wubber Moy. Little. Four doing well there to escape not one, not two, but three Paris players. Cass powering forward again and she's got the run on her marker. I think I will get there just ahead of Bourdieu. Screaming for someone to uh, arrive late in the penalty area that cross, wasn't it? Yeah, brilliant from Chloe Lacasse again. You know, you think somehow she's overrun it, but she didn't. She kept it in. Great cutback as well, but just the timing of it. But she's been a threat down the right-hand side. She was midweek as well, and she's replicated that in this game so far. Saw her a few times on Wednesday, cutting inside onto her left foot. It seems like this time the directive is, OK, we'll just get round them, round the outside, and uh, you've got the pace to do that. Just about half an hour in, and we've already seen it two or three times. A step. It's looking to feed Lacasse again. The blossoming partnership between those two on the right hand side. A very established one on this near side. Oh, that's loose. Nadozi has to click off her line. Margot Limuel. The most convincing pass back to her goalkeeper.
apologies for the loss of picture there. I've been assured uh, it's an issue on the ground that it's being investigated. I can tell you now, you didn't miss anything. Here's Baxtenius. Losing out to uh, Mateo. Thirty minutes gone, still very cagey here, this one. Paris chasing their uh, first group stage qualification since uh, 2013. It's the last time they qualified for the full tournament. It was actually coinciding with their best finish as well. They reached the semi-final where eventually they were... Uh, Knocked out by Leon. Of course, they're competing with the season's Champions League semi finalists in Arsenal. Looking to go one better this season, but of course, they need to qualify for the group stage first. It's a pretty relentless schedule in order to get there. Austin by Bogart. Was you back out to the left back? Leeds Catley has done well enough there to just hold her up. Change an angle there, and uh, Mateo trying to bring that one down. Stenius underneath this one, challenged by Sawyer, and will win the free kick as well. The saw one for Blackstenius. It's kind of a let them know you're there sort of challenge from uh, an experienced campaigner in Soyet. I was going to say that I think Blackstenius done really well to win Arsenal free kick there, but I don't think she intentionally meant to win it. I think obviously the defender comes in late behind her, but I think obviously Blackstenius stature, you know, it's difficult to win. I oh, know I played against her several times. It is really difficult to win the ball against her, which does well to eventually win Arsenal, obviously a free kick after a little bit of fragile defending, shall we say. She was judged on her goal contribution last season, albeit fairly harshly at times. I mean, she did end the season with 18 in all competitions, but it's those other areas of her game, the link play, the hold-up play, which make her, as you said, Jilly, so difficult to play against, but also so valuable to the team. Yeah, and she's such a willing runner as well. I mean, playing against her, she peels off of your back shoulder. She gets in the space between you and the fullback, and it's really difficult because you're constantly all the time looking to see where she is. I remember playing against her um, when I was at West Ham, and she'd come to get the ball short and literally just opened her legs, and it ran past both of us. And obviously, I think Miedema went on to score, but she does offer a lot. You know, she's a big player, and sometimes I think people would see a player that size and say, oh, and at that number nine, you know, the typical old school number nine. But she offers a lot more to her game and had a difficult season last year, especially obviously with the talk of Russo coming in in January. And she lacked a lot of confidence from watching her games. But the way she ended the season, you know, and uh, I think she was huge for Arsenal, especially in the, the Continental Cup final too. And, yeah, I was chuffed to see her finish the season the way she did. And start this season the way that she has as well. A goal against her former side, Lynn Sherping. Getting the nod for this afternoon's game as well. Bit of a talking to for Lou Bogar on the far side of the pitch. Step. 
Castanius again occupying a number of defenders given away by Velti. Usually so accurate regardless of which foot it's on and it's given away once more by Ford. Now Matteo, we've already seen she's a tricky operator. Missed that in the way of that one. I think just watching Arsenal in possession then and watching how Paris are defending, they're so compact, you know, and, and, they're, and they're so centralised. The space is in the wide areas. If Arsenal can get it in one way, set it back and get it out the opposite side, Ford is in so much space on the opposite side. It's a, it's a real chance for Arsenal then to get at Paris. They've got the players who can find those gaps as well. The players who can pass. We've already seen his step try a, a couple of ambitious crossfield passes in her fledgling Arsenal career. It comes back to what we were continuously saying throughout the first half of Wednesday's game, doesn't it? Pace of passing, up in the tempo, pulling players out of position, which is what they've done here with uh, the Maritz on the overlap. Good ball in as well. In fact, just a bit too close to Nadozi. Three players uh, and Arsenal red inside the area. It's an easy routine claim for one of the world's best goalkeepers. Extenius. Lacasse is somehow going to get there despite having a 15 yard disadvantage. Seems that the referee is going to be a bit more on it this game to the, the late challenges. I think on Wednesday, the referee let uh, uh, quite a lot go where this this one doesn't seem to be like that, which is, I think, a benefit for Arsenal, the way Paris play. If you've seen it in this first half so far, there are a few late challenges getting chucked in. They're trying to be aggressive towards Arsenal, bully them a little bit, and the referee's not standing for it. Let's step. Wilbur Moy and Caitlin Ford in the forward, lurking by this near post. Easy enough for Paris to deal with again. Melty into Ford. Happy to take the bumps off the defenders. Ford and spotted the clever run from Frieda Mornham as well. She was tracked every step of the way by uh, Rebeval. I think Arsenal just need to move the ball a little bit quicker. Now Paris are pressing a lot quicker and harder than what Lynn Sherping did. So need to move the ball. Don't allow them time to get in and around you. Clever header by Wilbur Moy. That's the picture there, though. You know what we're saying, the space is on the opposite side. Clever header by Wilbur Moore, but what Illustet Maritz is on her right hand, right hand shoulder. You know, there's so much space there. They're going back down the same channel as what it's just come from. A bit more communication, perhaps, as well. And Maritz could have done with a the shout there. She could have brought that one down under no pressure. Captain on captain. <laughs> Neat touch by Freedom Mornham. Good first time delivery as well. Stenius wasn't too far away from getting on the end of that cross. Yeah, very similar to Blackstenius' goal midweek, you know, with the one touch finish around the corner. Um, just bubbles away from her there, but obviously Moritz puts a good delivery in. But that's when Arsenal looked dangerous. One two combination play. 
Just like this from Defoe. Still going, Defoe, and she's got Mara Mateo on this near side. Into her left foot, good block by Catley. Mateo gets uh, another chance. Again, an Australian wall in her way. Yeah, Catley defends that really well, because initially, when the ball broke down on the opposite side, I did think it's Catley too far over. You know, obviously with the ball coming on her, on her left shoulder, but she manages to open up, get there, and, and reads it really well to put the block in. Played a few games at centre-back last season, Steph Catley. I think that's where we got a real true appreciation of her defensive ability. She's known for her set-piece delivery and for her assists, but she does have that part to her game as well. In comes the corner. Amistetz touch at the uh, penalty spot, enough to take it away from the Paris players. Sissoko. All a bit rushed at the back by Arsenal. Impressed in an Arsenal shirt. And was uh, unceremoniously up to the ground. Looks like uh, another challenge from Trebeval. Finally, a yellow card has been issued. I think that took a lot longer than I expected. <laughs> especially if uh, the play's been in the last five, ten minutes or so with the late challenges coming in, but Marnham does really well there. Feels the pressure from behind, spins and wins, wins Arsenal a free kick, which we're hoping is a better delivery than the previous ones. Last time, Catley's delivered. The delivery was cleared before reaching the area. This one's better. Instead, it was who was the intended target. Taken away from her, and again, look at Paris trying to break forward. Bourgeau has got the legs to keep this one alive. Runners inside the area as well. Bourgeau going for it. He's threading the needle pass. Easily dealt with by the Gunners in the end. It's a heavy touch as well by Bogart. I think Arsenal just need to be careful of the, the clearances, you know, because they're. There's times when they could put a foot on it, you know, and, and go back to Zinsberg or we'll work it back across the back line. But whether it's lack of communication or just lack of, of, of quality, composure on the ball, you're just feeding it back to Paris FC, you know, and the way they're attacking and how quick they are, it's not hurt Arsenal as such yet, but it could do. Sixty seconds then of this first half they will no doubt be time added on. Wonder who will be the happier manager going into the break? Oh, that's a that's a tough question. <laughs> I think I think Jonas will be happy in regards to Arsenal have been creating. You know, it's not like they've not created. Um, they are creating chances. I think they need to use the wide areas a lot more um, than what they're doing. But yeah, I think he'll be happy going into it. Speaking of wide areas, Cass picking out. Mornham drifting over to the right hand side as she loves to do. Once he didn't spot the through ball for Maritz, so now we come back to the left hand side and uh, into the feet of Kim Little. Lacasse. Now Mornham. Cass is the option again. It's in towards Blackstenius. He was in there too, and uh, Little leaves it for Catley. 
Jo, det ska nog minst två minuter utav den första handleden. Stenius, Sissoko, right behind her. Was you. And defended by Ugamoy. Just think Arsenal might need to just be a bit more patient, you know, with, with going forward. With Paris there setting behind, whether it be in the back four with a midfielder in shape. You might have to make just that extra pass, you know, to break him down, to draw a runner out. You know, Sissoko just watching her, she likes to get tight to Blackstinius. So that might be the decoy. You know, draw her out and play the ball around her. It's their time for the Gunners to get forward one more time before they head in at the break. Not like that there, is it? Mateo, as you on the overlap on the right hand side. Fancy their chances of uh, going herself there, Bourgeu. Catley. A strong challenge on her by uh, Gaetan Tinney. Check. But it's been a step up in quality, that's for sure, since the uh, midweek test against Lynn Sherping. The Gunners going close with uh, Otto Wilbur Moyes, header cleared off the line. They've had their chances as well to break forward in the wide areas. Chloe Lacasse in particular has stood out as the biggest threat in red and white. But Paris have also looked deadly. On the counter attack, Julie Defour testing uh, Manu Zinsberger with a low drive. Clara Mateo is also impressed as well. 